So we're back with more information on your favorite upcoming anime MMORPG, Sword Art Online. Just kidding, I don't know if this is your favorite game. Notice I didn't say I was joking about it being Sword Art Online, because this is Sword Art Online if it was an MMO. It, it's funny because I think, man, if Bandai just took the time to make a real Sword Art game, that shit would go crazy. And I'm not even a fan of Sword Art Online. I don't hate it, but I'm not a mega fan. And I know the game would be heat if Bandai really put time and effort into it. Instead of these single player games, they keep uh, throwing up from multiple anime games. Anyway, it's crazy because this is Bandai, so guess they did it in some way. That being said, there's more information on Blue Protocol. If you haven't seen this from another YouTuber, well, what's up? How's it going? I'm Cry. We're going to talk about it today because I don't know shit until I read this article. Going in blind as always, because that's fun. Greetings adventurers, the Blue Protocol database is here to showcase the exciting information which was presented to us from the developer live stream. And this will contain information relevant to the progress and development with the game. Therefore, please take note that this won't include any information in regards to the closed beta test which was already previously available. That can be found in their previous article and can also be found in my previous video. Look, there's a card on the screen, holy shit. Now we have a new area, this is exciting. Before we move ahead, I just wanna say, in the last video I saw hundreds okay not hundreds lots of comments about Genshin Impact Blue Protocol like oh man uh, this is gonna kill Genshin Genshin's resin system the only thing these games really share is that they are anime they're cell shaded they have that same look to them they are two totally different games one is an MMORPG massively multiplayer character customization another one is a single player gotcha game you're not creating a character you are playing pre-made characters that are in the story. I could make a 45 minute video about the differences between these two games. I don't think you should compare them. If you wanna move from one anime game to the next, you know, that's cool. But I feel like comparing these, it's kind of misleading because you're making people think they're in the same category when they're not. For now, Blue Protocol is only confirmed for PC. They're hinting that it will be on consoles and even before they hinted at that, I believe it's gonna be on consoles because it's Bandai. And the control scheme of the game, it's just, it, it's perfect for a controller. I can see this coming to PlayStation or Xbox. So I don't doubt that will happen, but for now it's only confirmed for PC. Whereas Genshin you can play on PC, mobile, PS4, and future platforms. Two totally different beasts. This isn't me saying one is better than the other. I love Genshin Impact. I get my gotcha waifu fix from that. But you guys know this channel was built on MMORPGs, and this is by far the game I've been looking forward to the most, I think, since I've made this channel. Doesn't mean I'm gonna just kick Genshin to the curve, two different fucking games. That being said, for the 80th time, let's talk about this new area. In this stream, we were presented with a new area. It looks like it's called Salamzart Oasis. Could have said that wrong, but I tried. This is a desert themed area. The oasis will have NPCs and buildings which will heavily match the overall theme of the area. In particular, it was noted that the NPC clothing will definitely be in a similar style to the town. Okay. So, you know, they're gonna follow the theme and I think this is good. It's such a small detail, but if you just make a new town and you copy pasta the same kind of NPCs and clothing from another town, it's just not that immersive. So to give them their own identity and style is, the Salamzar Oasis will have useful shops and NPCs that are readily available. This is a new town, like not just new area. I know I just read it, but it just hit me. We only have one main town, one main hub in the game and I thought that was going to be the hub forever. I thought you were going to, you know, go out and explore different areas, but there was a town in one of the areas that we did explore in the beta, but it wasn't like a, a functional town. It was more like, you know, for immersion, but here you have an actual functional town. So this is really cool. It means we can expect new towns, new areas, and you know in like multiple MMOs, almost all of them, you get a higher level and there becomes like a new hangout, a new city where people congregate higher level players and things like that. I think that might be the case here. Though I don't want to see the main city left alone and I can see Blue Protocol being a game where even once you're max level you still hang out in the main city because there's just so much to do. Now we also have the second thing that this article brings us to and again shout outs to Blue Protocol Database always providing us with uh, this juicy information and before we get into the second part we do have a sponsor for this video so please check this game out if you find it interesting. Forsaken World is an upcoming open world mobile MMORPG that's set to release in November. Like other MMOs, you can expect many of the genre's best features. Raids, dungeons, 
light scaling like fishing, PvP, character customization, and a massive world to explore. In Forsaken World, you can even take on world bosses with hundreds of other players at the same time, all from your mobile phone. There's a guild system where you can build fortresses together and fight against other guilds. The game even features flying, with unique looking wings and mounts, and it even has a pretty detailed character customization system. You can mix and match abilities and talents to fit your combat style so you're not running the same build as every other player, though you know how meta works. And what's unique about this game is that the world around you will be influenced by your in-game decisions, with a storyline that allows you to determine how it will play out. And the game is free to play, so if any of this sounds appealing to you, pre-registration is open until open beta starts in early November, and it'll be available on the Google Play and App Store. To pre-register, all you have to do is hit that link down below in the description of this video. Alright, so a new feature was presented where we could see a player doing a dungeon with the NPC named Jake. Now, I didn't watch this live stream, so, you know, these are all recaps. From what we know about Jake, he is an adventurer just like us. With this new information that was displayed, it's plausible that we will have similar missions where we fight side by side with other NPCs. They mentioned in particular that there will be more NPCs available in the future, so it seems that you can take NPCs with you on your journey. This kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy XIV system where I believe in Shadowbringers it was introduced that you could take NPCs with you on your journey, which was kind of cool. Sometimes you don't want to play with other players your first time doing a dungeon because you're like, I don't want to fuck up in front of some random and also you can learn the mechanics with the NPCs. Now, some of you are probably laughing and saying, dude, you're shit. What? You gotta play with NPCs your first time? Hey, fuck you. You may also have noticed that Jake uses a one-handed sword in a very unique fighting style. Is this the teaser for the new possible class? So they did mention that they are working on new classes. That's another comment I've seen multiple times. Jake, the co-op guy, could possibly be a teaser because he's using a one-handed sword and unique fighting style. I find that a little weird because we already have a one-handed sword class, though it does use a shield, so I was thinking if they would give us another sword class, it might be a katana with a samurai-like fighting style, or it might be a great sword. But if it's one-handed with unique fighting style, I'm going to try to find a clip of this so that I can show it while talking. I don't know what it looks like, but I'll put some text here to share my thoughts. Then we also have character creation. So character creation system received quite a bit of new features to make it feel more lively and added plenty of new things. The beginning of the character creation segment displayed a shake feature, which shows the physics of the character. Before I read more into this, I'm just guessing this is going to show off some jiggle physics, but uh, I'm just taking a guess. In particular, your hair is able to move and your chest can shake. Yes, okay. There were various customization options related to the face structure, which were added. The eyebrow type is changeable as well as the angle of the eyes. So pretty much we now have a more detailed character creation and you can just see all these little options here to mess around with but uh, going forward you are now able to adjust the lighting modes and character creation by changing it to morning afternoon or the evening okay so now we can properly adjust the way our character feels during different times of the day now we got some spellcaster changes i haven't played the mage never really been a mage guy but spellcasters now have a knockback skill available which is useful versus certain enemy types. This allows the class to be a bit more flexible by using crowd control to protect itself. Dodging was not stylish enough for spellcasters. Now they will blink and warp away to destroy their enemies with style. Additionally, they will be able to attack while dodging. Holy shit. Spellcasters really getting that upgrade. It was mentioned that they created a more flexible system for choosing elements. Instead of just having one electric skill, you can pick multiple. There is more freedom available overall. It was also noted that back in the closed beta, depending on how long you charge certain abilities for spellcasters, it can have an effect on your skills by increasing its intensity. In this version, it will depend on your skill level instead, so it will no longer work the same way. Much of this is still subject to change in the future as these functions are in development, so it sounds like spellcaster is a lot more appealing and just overall has become a badass class. I might even try it myself. And then new class, we're mentioning new class again. It was mentioned that the developers are also working hard on other classes and adjusting them. Right after that moment, some important information slipped out. Oh, slipped out. They indicated they are working on a new class. It's a very exciting class, so please look forward to it. Okay, very exciting class. The thing about this that makes me think it's not the one-handed sword guy is the fact that if they're talking about it like we haven't seen it, it's a very exciting class. I feel like that's not something they would say if they already showed us what it is. So I'm going to take a guess. <laughs> this is just a guess. These are not rumors or anything like that. Greatsword or Gunner? I don't know if they put Gunner in the game, but these are just my guesses. Please be Greatsword. Additionally, when the game will be released, it will be released with one more class. This includes the one that they are currently working on. Things are definitely moving forward. And also, since that beta 
or we're doing like a, a server load test, it does show that things are coming along. This is the new blue protocol information. And this is, I guess, kind of a lot to take in more than I expected. I'm extremely excited to see what this new class is. And I hope I get into the next beta. Again, you know, being pessimistic, I don't think I will, but it's gonna be cool just to see if that was a new raid that's gonna show in the next beta, because I'm not really familiar with one or two of the names mentioned in the last article that's gonna be in the upcoming server load multiplayer uh, queuing test beta. So it could be some new raid boss or new dungeon, I don't know, or it could be nothing. Anyway, new information here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And again, can we just, try to stop comparing the two games. I dealt with this question so many times when Blue Protocol was out and then it stopped for months and I was like, oh my God, I, I can't believe this. The people finally realized that they aren't the same game. And then my microphone cut out because my new headset went to sleep and somehow this disabled my microphone. And the rest of this video is just me rambling about I don't know what because I can't hear what I'm talking about. But anyway, that being said, I hope this new information was as interesting to you as it was for me. And if anything else comes out that's worth talking about or discussing, I'll probably make a video on it. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon, friends. Yeah, I actually like had to dub that clip.